So after we've gone through and we've gone through each of the uh, carriers and we reviewed them and made sure everything looks good, the next step is to come over into the email and reports tab. So within emails and reports, we get another view on the table and you'll notice up here it says emails are disabled until the settlement is locked. So up until this point, the settlement has been unlocked. If we come back out here, you can see that we've got the unlock symbol. Uh, the unlock symbol means that we're going through and we're currently working on this settlement. We're changing things, potentially moving things around, making sure everything looks good. So we can't actually email out these until the settlement is locked. But within here, you do have the option to download the different reports and at least view those. So if I download these reports and uh, let me pull it over here, you can see that we uh, have access to see what the driver will see when we give them this report. So in here, we have the summary up at the top, the loads, trucks, withholdings, fuel cards, any additionally do, et cetera. So the Excel looks pretty similar to that. So we can preview these if we want to or download them for our own convenience. There also is the option up here at the top to download the entire settlement. This would download it for everybody. Uh, the, this only is supported for the Excel, not for the PDF, because the PDF would be pretty massive and hard to use but uh, you do have the ability to download a giant Excel file with all of them or these individual ones for your own records or for emailing. Um, so within here, you'll notice that all this stuff is kind of grayed out because we're locked. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lock the invoice, which means that changes and refreshes and things will no longer work and we'll need to uh, unlock it if we need to make any changes, but it'll allow us to mark them as paid and you know, fire them off to the uh, different uh, drivers or carriers in here. So let's go ahead and lock it, which takes a second here. It's going to go ahead. And now we get access to all this other stuff. So as we go through here, you can sort alphabetically or by, you know, whether or not, you know, the dollar amount in here. But uh, we would go in and we'd say, you know, A and D transport, they, uh, the calculated payout, this is the column right here that you kind of pay attention to, is, you know, 2,871.74. So as we pay them out in our payment system uh, outside of load call, you can go ahead and as you're doing it, also click in here, click paid. And uh, if you end up paying them a different amount, you know, maybe you round up around down, we can put in, you know, a different value right here. Mark is paid. Whenever you do pay them a different amount, though, it will warn you and say, are you sure you want to mark them as paid this instead of, you know, the actual amount? So we can see yes or no. Um, but you can go ahead and when we pay them out in the other system, you can mark it in here. Say I paid them out at this date and time. And then after that, you can email off the report to them so that they have access to all that information that we kind of showed in that Excel. So if we click email, it'll pull up. It'll pull up the email we've ass that is assigned out to that carrier, which can be changed in the directory or other places. Um, and then based on any presets, which we don't have in here, but we could have had these presets uh, set so the subject and message are pretty straightforward. And uh, it automatically will have these attachments here. So, you know, Andy Transport, Andy Transport PDF with the number in there. And you can go ahead and click send. The... Uh, the customization for those can be accessed under these default settlements. So you can change the from name, the email subject, and the email body. So we can change this settlement um, files, etc. See attached. And if I go ahead and save that and go back into this settlement, which you'll notice now is locked, it has the yellow lock icon instead of the green unlocked. If I come over here and to send an email off to these people, you'll see that these get presets. So settlement files, see attached. So you don't have to write an email every single time. You can customize the from name too. Instead of being load call, it can be from uh, your organization name. But uh, so as you go through, you can you know say, yes, we've paid them in the third party system, put in the actual amount if it differs from what was calculated out and then fire off an email and kind of just run through here. And after you do send an email, you do get access to this carrier history or the email history here. So you can see uh, any emails that were sent from the load call no reply system. So you can track and make sure the emails actually were sent and see what all was attached. But uh, you kind of can just work through here and go through each carrier pretty quickly. You know, pay them, mark is paid, fire off email. Pay them, mark is paid, fire off email, etc. 
So the other thing to note in here is the uh, logs. And all that this page does is it keeps track of when a settlement was created, when it was locked, unlocked, things like that. So within here, you can see I created it this time and then I locked it you know, later on the same day. So there's accountability with creating, locking, and unlocking these as you go through. The only other thing in here is the ability to include test purchaser tickets, which may or may not show based on your organization settings. You'll pretty much never want to click this because then you may be paying out on test loads. But uh, there is the ability here to do that, but there's pretty much never a reason to do an action, unless you're doing kind of a demo invoice to teach your staff and you have a bunch of demo tickets or whatever. There's really never a need to include any of the test purchaser tickets in here. And this just prevents any tickets that are run for the load call, kind of default loaded in test purchaser. Um, those will prevent those from showing up. Now, if you do actually create an alternate test purchaser, this will not catch those. So you want to use the load call test purchaser. Otherwise, you may be paying out on uh, tickets that didn't actually occur, which, you know, it kind of gives the case for, you know, if you do accidentally create some test loads with a different purchaser, that may be a case where you want to change the payout here or, you know, do an extra one time withholding kind of to fix the uh, numbers in here. But uh, yeah, pretty flexible system, uh, pretty comprehensive to come in here and be able to get access to all of this information. There's a, definitely a lot on this page. Obviously, this video is pretty long, but uh, it should give you all the tools that you need in order to make sure that your drivers are getting paid the proper amount. And uh, once a lot of the configuration is set up, it's actually pretty blazing fast to go through, review everybody quick, and make sure that everyone's getting paid on time and that they're staying happy. So yeah, so that's the uh, load call settlement system.